So you're waiting for your passenger to come outside and get in the car, and as you see them walking out, you start counting. One, two, three, four, five, or even six people. But you're driving UberX or Lyft, and you only have four seatbelts. So what do you do? How do you handle this situation? Harry here with the Rideshare Guy, and today I'm gonna to talk about how to handle UberX and Lyft requests with too many riders. So the first thing you need to know is, obviously, as an UberX or Lyft driver, the basic requirement is that you have a vehicle with four doors and five total seatbelts, one for you as the driver and four for your potential passengers. Now, most rides may only be one or two or sometimes three passengers, and you don't get four passengers all that often, but you have four extra seatbelts, so that's the maximum that you can carry. That's policy with Lyft and Uber, and of course, that's also the law. So the first thing, I have a little confession to make. I'll be honest. I've given a ride to groups of five and groups of six before, and it was when I was first getting started. I mean, I frankly didn't really know any better, so I don't know that I could blame myself or even blame other drivers, because I know it happens out there, but, um, you know, you get to a rider, you probably know that it's wrong, but you've already wasted money. You've already wasted gas and time to get to that rider, and if, or maybe you've even already started the trip, and people start piling into the car, and then you realize that they're trying to cram five five or six into your UberX car. And at that point, you know, you don't have a lot of uh, solutions. You don't have a lot of actions you can take. So I definitely understand where drivers are coming from that are doing this. And, you know, once in a while, someone may even say, hey, I'll give you a good tip. But let's be honest, we all know that never happens. So why don't you want to do these rides? Now, the first thing is you could easily get a ticket, right? If a cop sees you, pulls you over, you're driving Friday, Saturday nights, so there's cops out. They know that people are intoxicated. They're looking for people to get tickets to. And in most states, the driver is actually responsible for that ticket, even if it's a passenger seatbelt ticket, for example. And, you know, if you think the passenger is going to pay you back for that ticket or Uber or Lyft, there's definitely no, uh, my passenger didn't have a seatbelt on and I got a ticket option in the Uber or Lyft driver app, or at least the last time I checked. So, the bigger risk, though, in my opinion, is the liability. If you get into an accident and that person sues you or Uber, I mean, let's face it, we're in a litigi litigious society. Is that how you say that word? Um, basically, everyone likes to sue each other, and Uber has deep pockets. You're potentially going to get named in a lawsuit, too, is what I've seen from experience with talking to drivers where this has happened or similar situations. So, you know, you kind of obviously want to avoid that, avoid that. Or, I mean, what if Uber's insurer says, hey, we're not going to cover medical bills for that fifth person who is in the car if you get into an accident, right? I've never actually heard of that happening, but I could imagine that it's a risk. I mean, insurance companies are kind of shady, right? So what is the solution to this problem? How do you handle this? Now, the first thing I have to tell you is you don't want to be a dick about it, right? You want to be firm with your passengers, but you also have to be understanding, right? Um, so sort of, I would almost even say caring, right? Diffuse the situation, right? Instead of telling them no, you know, being kind of furious with them, being angry, right? That only escalates the situation. Obviously, it's not the ideal situation, but you want to defuse this situation. So you can say something like, hey, I'd love to take you, but Uber's insurance only covers four passengers and I only have four seatbelts, so unfortunately can't do it, right? Um, and give them options, right? Don't just say no. Say, hey, how about I take four of you now um, or you can cancel and order an Uber XL. It's only a few dollars more, right? I'm telling them no, but I'm presenting them an alternative option. Or you can also say something like, unfortunately, I can only take four passengers, but I'm happy to wait with you guys while you call another Uber X. Now, most passengers, you know, probably aren't going, you know, they may come with you and then maybe their friends will wait or whatever, right? But you sort of see where I'm getting with uh, these solutions, right? If you're finding that this is a constant problem in your market, maybe there's certain times or places where you keep getting requests and you show up and there's six people trying to jam in the car, you can always send a quick text. As soon as you accept the request on Uber or Lyft, you also obviously have the option to text your rider and you can say something like, hey, you know, this is Harry, your driver, I'm on my way. And just as a reminder, um, the law only allows me to transport four passengers. Something like that, simple, casual, um, might get a little annoying if you have to do that every single time, but you can use a shortcut or something like that to expedite that process. And, you know, um, you know, personally, personally, you know, obviously I don't allow this in my car anymore. And this is one area where I think, uh, you know, I would almost say that every single driver needs to be basically not doing these rides because you need to be strict with this because if you give a passenger an inch, obviously they're going to take a mile, right? If you let a passenger do this once, then they're probably going to try and do it again and say, oh, my last Uber driver, let me do it. Or, oh, my last Lyft driver, let me do it. But if they run into a roadblock with you next time when they go and they have five people, they may not call that UberX, right? They may say, man, that driver, Harry, that I got last 
last time was kind of a dick about it um, and he made us call another ride and it was annoying, it was a hassle, right? That's what actually what we want, right? Because then in the future, now they call two UberXs or give some more business to our buddies on UberXL. So that's definitely, you know, sort of how I would look at it. And a nice little pro tip for you guys is if you do have an UberXL eligible vehicle and let's say someone requests Uber X, but they get into the car with more passengers, right? Because a lot of Uber XL drivers take Uber X and XL. But let's say you can, you have a request and they come in with six people, even though they only requested Uber X, you can actually submit a request to Uber after the ride is over via the help menu. Select that trip and say that the pa there are more than four passengers. Um, if you have a dash cam, this is a another just another scenario where you know it's going to be good to have that evidence on your side in case anything happens. So hopefully that answers the questions. Uh, recapping this video, guys need to make sure that you know if you are getting these requests, make sure that you're handling them smart and don't do these rides and uh, make sure that you prepare too for the future that so you can avoid these. So if you guys do have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them below or send me an email, Harry at the Rideshare Guy. Com. We release new videos every single Tuesday and Thursday, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. All right, drive safe, everyone.